And these pieces get a little bit interesting for a couple of reasons. One of them is that we have handed parts. One of them is going to form the right-hand side of the doghouse, and the other one's going to form the left-hand side of the doghouse. So if I fold them identical, I'm not going to be able to build the little doghouse. It doesn't matter which side you put the cutout on this particular, uh, on this particular project. You can either have a right-handed or a left-handed project, and it doesn't specify which it needs to be. Uh, but whichever side you do, I could put it on this side or I could put it on the other side and that would uh, obviously make a difference in what your final product is going to be. One of these is going to go up and the other one goes down. So I'm going to actually flip these over to put in my other sight lines on the other sides. Now it's time to go bend again. But this time it's gonna be a little tougher bending because I'm gonna to have to approximate what this angle is. And because this is a slightly different angles on the big side and the little side, it's not actually going to fit exactly until we start pulling it across and the sheet metal does its own thing. But we're gonna do the closest that we can when we go to bend this. So here's the parts we made. And we're gonna put the two pieces of the doghouse together and they're gonna go over the top of the spar. Now, you're going to notice when you do this that they don't fit exactly perfectly. Don't worry, when we go to rivet this together, all the sheet metal is going to pull itself up nice and tight, and that's not going to be a problem. But we want it to be relatively close before we start putting the sheet metal together. What we're doing now is we are attaching these pieces together. I'm going to temporarily clamp them together with these little C-clamps, and then we'll drill and Clico them together while we get all the pieces to fit. So here's our first couple of C-clamps. Now it is very important that we get all of these set properly because this is the place where we are going to define how well these pieces fit. And if we define that poorly, uh, we're gonna have a piece of crap project. And if we define that well, the, piece of pro the project is gonna come out relatively well. All right, so we're going to play the drill and Clico game. Drill on one edge. Clico that edge. Drill the next corner. And we're going from corner to corner because we don't want to let anything slip when we are actually ready to go. So one corner at a time. And then I'll probably stick a Clico into the middle. Then I can get rid of these big, bulky C-clamps and work just off of Clicos. That's the center. And much like we did our holes before, we're going to use our fly cutter, drill a quarter inch, um, drill a quarter inch pilot hole, use our fly cutter to cut that out. And we're gonna do that before we do any additional cutting on this project or any additional forming. We're going to unclico it and do that. Be careful because it can go together in a number of different ways. And I've had a couple of people hand this project in this way instead of this way. And you want to make sure that you get it correct. We do need to make sure that uh, we find the same spot that we drilled before because if I put this spar in this way instead of that way, the rivet hole, the drill holes wouldn't fit. So here we are and we're going to check for fit. And what we need to do, this piece needs to slide into the end and there needs to be enough looseness for one layer of sheet metal in between the two sides. If it's too tight, you can sand a little bit off. If it's too loose, you need to build a new one. So now we need to attach these little custom-made pieces that we put in here. Luckily, they just kind of hold themselves in place, so that makes it a lot easier to measure and mark. 
we're going to push them into exactly the right position. And once they're in exactly the right position, I'm going to cheat a little bit. Not cheat, but just be smart. And I'm going to use this little C-clamp to hold it down really nice and firm uh, right across the bottom because that's probably the most critical place that we're going to work. This one right here is the one we want, one inch. I'm going to mark this with my red marker because I don't want to accidentally drill too far. I've had a few students do that and that makes a bad day. We only want to drill this out to one inch, which means we need to stop before we get to the red line. Here's where the process gets a bit crazy. I need to transfer these holes exactly onto here. But I have this piece, and this piece can be used to establish where the center is. And this is where I'm going to be a little bit, uh, shall we say, sneaky? I'm going to Clico this piece onto the back instead of onto the front. And when I Clico this piece onto the back, it's going to help everything line up. Ah, I've got to find out find exactly where it code. I got it in the wrong spot. There we go. That's how it fits. So I'm going to put one Clico, two Clicos, two is enough to specify. Now this is going to center itself up on the hole. And when it centers itself up on the hole, that's what's going to allow me to drill through that hole and Clico my first piece into position. Now making sure it's centered up in the hole and it's not wedged on one side or the other, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to Clico the second piece, the second hole, and I can continue moving my way around drilling all eight holes. Sneaky, huh? Now I have to be careful when I go to put things back together again because they all have to fit in the same order. So this piece is going to fit back from the bottom side. I'm going to have to take this piece loose, Clico it back to the top again. And while I'm doing all of that, I need to peel all of this um, masking tape and plastic because we're ready to begin riveting just as soon as we can. And one of the things that you're starting to see is my nice flat piece isn't nice and flat anymore. Anytime I start bending on something, it's going to bend somewhere else. Anytime I start flanging on a hole or, or dimple dying on a hole. So uh, we're going to come back and we're going to address that and fix that before we're done. And here's my little patch plate, almost ready to mount. But again, it's all dished out, so I'm going to take and undo the dishing. And to undo the dishing is going to require that I hit it pretty good with my rubber mallet. I have a nice soft rag. That's to give it a little bit of room for spring back. And I'm going to flatten this piece down into the edge. And now we're getting much, much better. Now we're close to the flat that we're supposed to be. I'm probably going to hit it a couple more times here. Down into the wood. There, I'm pretty happy with how flat it is once again.